Good afternoon, everybody. I'm pleased to be here with Mary Beth Salas, who is a PR expert and a media commentator and has a pretty fascinating sort of personal journey that gets her, her here today. So love you to talk a little bit about your background, including as an athlete and then the work that you've done with athletes. Great. Too. This works, right? Oh, perfect. Hi, my name is Mary Beth Salas. Uh, for 10 plus years, I was a personal publicist to professional athletes as well as individuals in Hollywood. So my background is mostly in entertainment and sports. Um, past clients have included JaVale McGee, Greg Luganis, Josh Gordon. Um, had a wonderful time for 10 years. I entered Web3. Uh, I watched it as an observant for about a year. I'm like, what are these apes? You know, what's going on? And I finally jumped in the game, probably December, uh, minted my first NFT uh, January, and I'm very active on Twitter. So my, what I, I escaped being a publicist. If anyone knows what a PR life is like, it's a little bit of crisis management, other than, you know, in addition to media relations, um, curating a narrative, you know, for your clients, uh, fixing undesirable situa situations, as well as, you know, just making sure people are on time, <laughs> you know? Um, and then I entered Web3 because I wanted to create the lifestyle that I want. I, you know, being a publicist, I worked 25 hours a day, eight days a week, and probably 367 days a year. And it's just not what I wanted to do, you know, after doing that for 10 years. So I entered Web3 for more personal freedom and connection, honestly. So, so um, you were telling me you were an athlete in, uh, in high school and college. What, you know, how did you get to these professional athletes to begin with? Oh, interesting. Um, so I wasn't, okay. So at the end of the day, like, I love sports, right? I was an athlete in terms of, look, I wasn't a pro athlete. I wasn't even a D1, D2, D3 athlete. Um, played sports, you know, at the elementary level, played club volleyball, played lacrosse, club, you know, rec lacrosse in, at St. Louis University, go Bills. Um, but at, and I'm a St. Louis native, go Cards. Anyone? No? Okay. Um, and so I just love sports. I think sports is a universal language um, for anyone, right? And so, you know, like, it, it, no matter where you're from, you know, around the world, across the U.S., it's one thing you can just get together and get along, you know? Um, what was the other question? So just like, the, the, how oh. did you wind up getting to the athletes? <sighs> Uh, about 16 years ago, I started, I actually started, um, I worked for a media company. I did red carpet reporting where I actually interviewed athletes and celebrities. Um, and then I just learned the game backwards. Meeting the athletes was more so networking in terms of, it's always through their managers, right? And we can actually talk a little bit about that in terms of NFTs. Um, but when you're, you know, as a publicist, you're part of the circle, you know, every athlete has, a professional athlete would have an agent, a manager, perhaps a publicist, um, the significant other, and then the best friend or high school, you know, best friend, you have to work with everybody, right? It's, it's like a team behind an individual um, to make things happen. So it was mostly, honestly, like, <sighs> I'm just, I was just like a, I met them like at games, like at ESPN events and things like uh -huh. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's, uh, wh what do you think is misunderstood about being a publicist? What's misunderstood? Okay. So what's misunderstood about being a publicist is that all we do is get media coverage for communities or people, entities, or in this case, athletes, right? Um, being a publicist also means being a gatekeeper, 
It means if you want to start your own NFT project, what is the branding, you know, behind you as a person? And actually, now that I'm saying that, um, you know, NFTs can actually give athletes, whether at the professional level, collegiate level, um, even high school level, right? A, a way to express themselves individually. B, uh, connect with consumers at a faster pace, right? Um, and, and, you know, it's, go ahead. I mean, I just gonna say that sounds like a fascinating point to me because your career is sort of like, you get started in an age of more gatekeepers, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, the athlete has to talk to ESPN or he or she has to talk to Sports Illustrated, the local newspaper. Sure, and now, you know about that. Now it's, you know, there are all these opportunities and that's before we, we add in NFTs and other sort of direct ways of corresponding or transacting just with your fan base. For sure, so, you know, um, even on Twitter, right? Everyone in the NFT world is on Twitter. Um, being able to hop in a space and speak directly with a coach or an athlete, like that, that's something that wasn't, you know, possible in the past. Um, it gives, I, you know, I think NFTs really the human side of an athlete, you know, out there in the public. Um, it's, you know, at the professional level, athletes tend to be a number. They're a stat, you know, um, how well they've played. But, you know, in, in the Web3 world, athletes are able to, to show the other side of them, you know, show who they are as a human being. Do you think, I mean, my, the, my, wor my work, my experience dealing with athletes oftentimes was short career, need to try to maximize as much money as you can make mm. during that period of time. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, from your experience, you deal with athletes and you begin to talk about NFTs, how much of it starts with how much money I can make and how much of it is, no, this is really a way where I can expand sort of, you know, how I express myself, what people think of me, what my brand is, that kind of stuff. So I've spoken with um, active athletes, former athletes uh, about NFTs. Um, the conversation, you know, does start with often, um, hey, I can make a lot of money off of this, right? It tends to be a starting conversation point. Um, and many athletes actually, you know, they actually think about I, there's going to be longevity in this, right? How do I brand myself off the court or off the field? And that has actually been very, it's, 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 it's a pleasant experience talking to them about it, you know? Um, so, um, when you think about Web3, like both as a lifestyle issue for yourself and for, and for athletes, like you know, why is why is it different? Why is this why is this the path that you took? Why is it the path that I took down that you're Web3? taking now? Yeah. Oh man! First of all, I love not getting 5 a.m. phone calls from TMZ. To be honest with you, I love being in control of my own time and being able to have dinner with my husband. You know, that's that's real. That's personal. Um, I think, for me, NFTs and Web3, I, it's just, I get to be friends with, like, creators first, right? It's not about the athlete first. It's about, let's kick it, let's create, let's grow together. You know what I mean? It sounds cheesy, but, like, we've all, I have, like, a small circle of friends in the NFT space, and I think those relationships are just organic and awesome. Do you have a perspective, at least early, about like what makes some people more successful at this? You know, if you're going to get together in some sort of creative context with athlete or musician or celebrity, and they're interested in NFTs, what's what? What do you think are some of the building blocks to being successful? Ooh, building blocks to being successful. In my opinion, in this case, let's say for athletes, whether you're a collegiate athlete, pro athlete, former, um, even high school, 
I think success starts at, even if it's just two people, right? The organic connection. Um, that is what's giving a lot of individuals more longevity in the NFT space. Uh, not just the quick sellout, right? Um, we hear that often. It's the, it's, it's the opportunity to, um, for example, uh, Meta Athletes, right? So I'm a member of Meta Athletes. The reason why I love that community is because we are, I like I was one of the few first females, right, in the very beginning, but whether they're, uh, our community members are coaches, active athletes, like baseball players, um, former athletes, collegiate athletes, and we even have a few members who are high school athletes. But at the end of the day, whether it's in Discord or whether it was, you know, like last night, for example, at an event, we were all humans who love sports, period. And that's what, like, that's what makes, you know, Meta Athletes, like, my safe space in the NFT And world. Meta, Meta Athletes is, is a group that originally was formed around Twitter or Discord. How, how, did, you, how did you find them? And what is, what, what's, their, what, what's their sort of ambition? Great. Can I tell the real story here? <laughs> yeah, so sure. I, so um, I hopped in. So I follow sports individuals, right? Whether they're media people, managers. Um, I just like the sports of uh, the business of sports. And I hopped in a space one morning. I think it was like a morning. This is like Twitter Spaces. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And there were about eight people in there, all males. And I was like, okay, this is cool. All males. Okay, um, and I checked out the website. I'm like, this is this is my first, you know, sports community that I was interested in, and I contacted the founder, a co-founder of Meta Athletes. His name is Drew Cohen, and I was like, yo, and I set up a Zoom. I'm like, where are your female, you know, team members at, you know? And so, and and I was like, are you gonna have any females in your uh, PFP collection? And so that's where the conversation started. And the fact that Meta Athletes was just responsive to that, you know, and then inviting, and they invited me to become, you know, a part of that community and like, hey, you like sports? Like, we don't, you know, we don't really have any females right now. I'm like, green light, let's go, you know? Um, and that's what, like, it's it's just very inviting. It doesn't feel like it's um, you know, like a you have to be of some kind of status to be a part of the community. If that makes sense. Are you are you are you are you able to get more women in, more and more women interested in it? You know, you, you know, since you since you started. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, so in general, in my opinion, like in terms of Twitter spaces. Um, it makes a huge difference, especially for sports communities. Like, bring on a female co-host. Like, bring on female speakers. When we go in, when I'm speaking on behalf of um, women, uh, when I go in a space, I look at, the, like, the first two rows, right, on my iPhone, and I see, like, if I'm, like, do, 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 I'm, like, uh, you know, but I get more interested when I see like the fellow females, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's a Cubs fan, boo, but still, I'll still go in, right? And it's just more comforting. And Meta Athletes was, has been like that one NFT community that was able to just like, hey, you like hockey, you like baseball, or you used to play in the NFL, come join us, you know? And we're all just one fam that kicks it together and just grows, you know, and, and in terms of, the NFTs, like they're coming out with a female collection now, which I'm super stoked about. Um, but, it, but it's just, it's like what, what a lot of sports communities are lacking is the connection to female consumers, right? Um, do I really want, you know, a PFP of just very, you know, not cute stuff, honestly? No, I don't. Um, but I like the fact that, in terms of meta athletes, I like the fact that they're they've listened to just women uh, community members and and tailored around that. And so I'm like, all right, but you know, 
this is home. It's cool. So we had Scott Lawn, who is the CEO of Candy Digital. They have a huge deal with, they're a joint venture of, um, um, with Fanatics, and they have a huge deal with Major League Baseball. And you said you're a lifelong St. Louis Cardinals fan, That's right? That's right, St. Louis Cardinals. Go what do you cards. think, um, what do you think baseball should be doing in terms of NFTs and Web3 to sort of better serve fans like you? Oh man, that's a great question. Well, you did say you were a Cardinals fan. 100% so. cards, only cards. 11-time um, world champions. Uh, so I think that, so first of all, I, it, I think it would be so much easier for any enterprise, and then, you know, specifically, let's say the MLB, for, don't even say NFTs, these are digital assets, right? Whether they're tickets, um, electronic baseball trading cards, um, you know, or just tickets to sports, like fan events, you know? Like, come meet Yadi Molina, that would be so cool, right. by the way. Uh, so, like, come have, you know, have a Web3 gathering of, with, with Yachty and some people, right? I think it would just be a great experience, you know? I, thi I think pro sports leagues in general, whether NFL, MLB, like, just get in with that fanatic fan base, right? And go from there. It's not... Don't make it so complicated. So we had Asher Weiss from Tixology earlier, and his company is developing, you know, tickets as NFTs. And okay. we were talking a little bit about how that could create this sort of you know, this sort of connection where you have your ticket. It mm -hmm. could be both digital and physical. It could it could wind up you know, sort of helping the club know who you are, and that be be an invitation to other experiences. Um, one, one of the entrepreneurs I know, Mahir Wawalker from LiveLike was here before and he's talking about how increasingly like fan apps are gonna be sort of token locked. Um, um, basically that if you have a particular NFT that could open up the Yadier Molina discussion, you know, sure. whereas if, if not, not. So do you, do, do you, do you see more of that coming? Do you see more expansion to you know encouraging fans to have to have to have club NFTs because it can unlock specific experiences? I do see it coming. I just hope that um, these teams or leagues approach it just more in a simplistic way for the for the we call them Web two consumers, but I just call them for people to just, you know, okay, so Eventbrite, right? Um, people started using, you know, they're like, what is this barcode? What is Eventbrite? Um, if you present it to the consumer just as easily, I think it can just, people are able to immerse themselves, you know. So it's almost these. like abstracting out the technology, right? It's like it does something for you, but we don't have 100%. to. 100%. Yeah. Right. And e just in making the vernacular simple. Who want, you know, if you say, if I tell my my 78-year-old father, oh, dad, I work in NFTs, you know, or here's an NFT to go to a baseball game, he's going to be like, what is that? Um, but if I just said, hey, here's your e-ticket, big difference, right? You have interest in, in, in some of the metaverse discussions that we've heard this morning. Is that, you know, has that been a discussion within Meta Athlete? I mean... So, to be honest with you, I... I hope I, you're only honest with me. <laughs> thank you for calling me out on that. Um, metaverse, right? I just, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of in real life stuff. So, you know, I know that sports, like you can create the stadiums, you can create experiences, you can create get togethers. Um, I just, on, I see it more so being beneficial in real life like give me in real life. I want to meet these people face to face. Sure, we can see the virtual, you know, do some AR type experience, but I mean, I'd fly out to go to a kickball game and play with athletes, right? If you gave me that opportunity through an NFT. Um, any questions for Mary Beth in the audience? 
Anybody have a question? Okay. Yeah. So, do you, so the question is, athletes taking over contractual rights, negotiations, by using NFTs in some form. Are we talking NIL? Um, why, don't you, why don't you talk about the difference sort of NIL for a college and, then, and then, then just a professional discussion? So historically, um, professional athletes if I put it in easy terms, kind of gave up the rights to their own names, image, and likeness, right? Whether it's for a video game, um, trading cards, and they were, they were, it's almost as if your name, image, and likeness, um, if it were owned by the team, right? So, you know, in terms of NFTs now, it's, um, more athletes are having more control over using their name, image, and likeness. Uh, and so what was the second question? Or what was the other part? It was, it, it was like, you know, for, for a professional athlete and, you know, your background as a publicist, do you yeah. think that as athletes sort of, you know, you, you know, look to negotiate their rights going forward, whether it's salary or collective bargaining, do you think NFTs will play a role in that? Mm. Will athletes try to protect certain rights? Well, yes. I th well, I already think that athletes are um, utilizing NFTs to begin that that journey, right? To protect their name, to um, make revenue on their own, right? Yeah, on their own. Mm hmm Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Upcoming, upcoming, oh. I can tell you like the ones I enjoy now, but I don't, I, I don't have an upcoming favorite one to be honest with you. Tell me, which one should I be looking out for? Uh, hi, hi, the sports initiative. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Yeah, sports initiative's awesome too. They, um, they make sports accessible, right? You know, if you're a holder, you're able to, you have the opportunity to perhaps play a sport with an Olympian or professional athlete. So I think that's really dope. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, What's, uh, what would you specifically like Mary Beth to talk about name, image, and likeness? So c connection between name, image, and likeness and NFTs. You know, you, you, know we also, you also talked before about younger athletes getting involved here, too. Oh, right. So, okay. So uh, let's, say we, let's say I am a collegiate athlete, right? Um, I'm going to play basketball, you know, for the next four years at a university. Um, so, for example, I'll, let me just give you a specific example. Uh, there is a, an NFT project called Women of Basketball. It's co-founded by a mom and a daughter. The daughter is uh, starting in junior college playing basketball. And she, they are using NFTs to create their, who they are as athletes and as people now, right? Um, and so at the professional level, for example, Tim Cook, he has uh, the Dreamcatchers NFT. Um, he is able to create his own brand, right? Um, he is able to bring in the revenue, you know, from the Dreamcatchers, and it's his, right? He is able to use his own name um, without having to ask permission, you know, as opposed to. You know, sometimes you're contracted and you're not, <laughs> you're not able to even mention things on social media or, you know. Yeah. 
Yes, correct. Yeah. Thanks for that question. Hey, Mary Beth, thank you. Thank Great you. Great discussion. Um, and um, we're going to go to our next, uh, our next speaker. Thank you so thank much, you. John. Okay. It was an honor to be with you. Bye.